In this video, we will show you how to replace your intake gaskets on this Dodge Ram. It's located as part of your engine, so let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing we'll do is make our way under the hood. We're looking for the fuse box. We'll lift this up by grabbing onto these two tabs and quickly have a look at the legend along the inside. What we're looking for is the fuel system relay, number 51 right there. Now, if we were to hold this right next to where the fuse box is, we're going to find that same relay. Go ahead and take hold of that, give it a little wiggle and lift it up and out of there. A quick look for corrosion. We'll set this aside temporarily. Now we can hop inside the vehicle and attempt to start it. Now, once you attempted to start the vehicle and you found that it did not start and run, continue on by reinstalling that relay. You wanna make sure you press it in there as far as possible so you're sure it's making complete contact. We'll put on the protective cover after that and move along to the negative battery terminal. To disconnect the negative battery terminal, I'll be using an 11 millimeter wrench. I just wanna loosen up this nut just enough that I can remove the terminal end from the battery. We'll set that aside so it's making no contact. Now we can start draining the coolant. To do that, we're going to open up the radiator cap. We'll give it a quick inspection and set that aside. Now we can make our way under the vehicle to start draining. From underneath the driver's side front corner of the vehicle is where you're going to find the drain on the radiator. Now of course you do want to have a collection bucket under this area, but I'm also going to use a drain hose so I can divert the coolant directly into my bucket without having to worry about anything. Now as for the drain itself, I'll be using some pliers. I'm going to grab onto this area and turn this counterclockwise. Let's let that coolant drain. Once it stops draining, we'll close up that drain. Let's turn that clockwise until it bottoms out. It's a good idea to use some pliers just to ensure that it is actually completely closed. There we are. Up inside the engine compartment, the next thing we wanna pay attention to is your serpentine belt. Pay attention to the routing. It goes over some pulleys and under others. We're going to be removing the serpentine belt from this area. To do that, along the passenger side front, next to your ignition coil is where you'll find the tensioner. We're going to be using a 15 millimeter to turn this clockwise, release tension, and then remove that belt. It's a good idea to fully remove the belt from the area so you can give it a thorough inspection and so it does not get any coolant on it. Now we can start removing the alternator from the area. To do this, you'll find that you have two 14 millimeter headed bolts. There's one up along the top, the one down along the bottom, you'll be using two 14 millimeters. One to hold the nut along the backside, and the other, of course, to unmount the bolt. Let's start with the lower one. Now with that one loose, let's make our way up to the top here. That one's considerably longer. Take hold of that starter. We're going to lift it up and out of the way. We can rest that on the side. Now that we have that out of the way, we have a clear view of the thermostat housing. To be able to gain a little bit better access to this, I'm going to remove this hose as well. This has an eight millimeter headed clamp holding the hose in place. You can also use a flathead screwdriver. Now we can start removing the hose from this area. To do that, you can either grab onto it, give it a little wiggle, see if you can break it free, use a hose pick, make your way under there, or even a pry bar. Whatever you do, be careful not to damage the hose. It is possible to still have a little bit of coolant in the system, so just keep that in mind. Now that we have that hose out of the way, the next thing that we'll do is start removing the thermostat housing from the intake. To remove the housing, we'll be removing two 13 millimeter headed mounting bolts. You'll have one along the backside and then one along the front here.
Now we can take hold of that upper radiator hose and the housing and move it out of this area. So I'll swing it around. After that's out of the way, let's have a look down in here. You're going to find that you have a gasket that needs to be removed. After that, we can also remove the thermostat. Let's move along to removing the air inlet. You'll find that you have the inlet tube along the passenger side. We'll take hold of that, give it a wiggle to separate it. Once you've done that, we'll move along to the breather hose. For this, you can just give it a little wiggle, give it a quick squeeze to make sure it's soft and pliable, and we'll set both of these aside for now. Along the driver's side of the air filter box, you'll find that you have an eight millimeter headed clamp holding this to the throttle body. Loosen up that clamp. Once that's loose, we'll give this a little wiggle and remove it from the vehicle. Let's start removing the bracket. Before we start dismounting it, pay attention to the fact that there's a wiring harness that makes its way down along the bottom. It's held in place. We'll be squeezing the top of this clip with some pliers. There's two little ears. And then you should be able to pull this right on down. Now we can continue on to removing our two 14 millimeter headed mounting bolts. The forward one does have a stud sticking out the top. The next thing that you would want to do is carefully remove the AC compressor from the area. On our application, we have a bypass pulley in place. If you still have your AC compressor, you'll find that you have a couple wiring harnesses that you have to disconnect. Once you've done that, you're going to continue on to removing five mounting bolts. You should have two mounting bolts coming along the front, and then you would have three mounting bolts along the back side. Once you have the three along the back, there should also be a bracket that you would remove as well. For our application, we're going to be removing the bypass pulley and the bracket. I'll be using a 13 on my application. are typically pretty long. Now, as I had mentioned, if you had your regular compressor, you would have two more bolts, one up along the top of the intake and one just down along this area. Go ahead and remove that bracket, and then you would take the AC compressor and carefully swing it off to the side, making sure that you do not damage your AC hoses. We'll just pull this right out of here. Now we can move along to removing our three 8 millimeter headed mounting bolts that hold our accelerator linkage to the throttle body. You'll find that you have two along the front and one just along the side. We'll start with the one along the side. Now that I've got that one out of there, we'll do the two along the front. There's one down low. It's a little harder to get to, I'll start with that. Now with this loose, we can take this forward cable, we'll slide it underneath this area, and then we can pop it right off of this area. That should just slide right into place. It's got a little hook there. We'll do the same for this one. Just grab onto that, slide it right off. Quick inspection. 
With that bracket out of place, let's continue on to removing this rubber hose. Let's carefully grab onto it and slide it off. A quick inspection and we can set that aside. Now we can start disconnecting some electrical connectors. You'll find that you have one right across the front here. We'll squeeze on the top little locking tab, pull that out, a quick check for corrosion. Set it aside, move along. Moving a little further rearward along the driver's side, we have another one right along here. Quick check for corrosion. And now all the way along the back. Pop this one out of place as well. Now that everything's disconnected around the throttle body, it's time to start dismounting it from the intake. For this, you'll find that you have four 13 millimeter headed bolts to remove. Then we can get this throttle body out of position. Now we can lift this off of here, just lift it up and over that bracket, set this aside. Now we need to start removing the accessory drive bracket. To remove this, there's going to be several bolts holding it in place. To gain access to one of them, we'll be removing this idler pulley. Use a 14 millimeter to remove that center bolt. With the idler pulley out of the way, let's continue on down to this bolt, which holds the bypass tube that comes out of the water pump in place. Now we can take hold of the bypass tube and the hose. We're going to give this a little wiggle and start drawing it up and away from the water pump, paying attention to the angle in which it goes in. Get a little bit of coolant in there. On the passenger side of the bracket, you'll find that you have a 13 millimeter headed bolt that holds the oil dipstick tube to the bracket. Remove the bolt and separate that dipstick tube. Let's continue on to our 14 millimeter headed mounting bolts. You'll find that you have two along the passenger side, one below the other. We'll get both of these out of here. We'll move a little further towards the center here. Now we can make our way over towards the driver's side. We'll remove our final two 14 millimeter headed bolts over here. Make sure you're holding onto that bracket so it doesn't fall. Let's remove the bracket from the area. Now we can move along to disconnecting our fuel injectors. You'll find that you have four of these on each side of your intake. To disconnect these, it's going to be the same process for each. There'll be a red locking tab that you'll need to pry up and away. And then there's a squeeze tab that you can squeeze in and lift this up and off. Once you have it disconnected, you'll be checking it for corrosion and then doing the same to all. So there's that red locking tab that was pressed down inside here and I lifted it up and out to unlock it. A quick check for corrosion and now we'll do the same to all. We've got all of them done on the driver's side. I'll do the exact same thing on the passenger side.
While we're on this side of the engine, let's continue on with a couple of electrical connectors. Start down low, grab onto this one, give it a little wiggle. That looks good. Make our way right up here. That one looks good as well. And we'll just take this wire, we'll slide it out of the way. Now we can pay attention inside the center here. For this, we'll grab onto the hose. You wanna give it a twist and try to pry it off of there. If it doesn't wanna come off, we can just use a small pry bar or screwdriver and we'll gently pry it out of place. Make sure it's still soft and pliable, it's not torn. You can set that aside as well. On the driver's side, we'll continue on to disconnecting the fuel line from the fuel rail. We'll make our way right down inside this area and we'll gently pry it apart. Now we can remove that locking tab. Just have to twist it around, should want to slide out. Now we can use a disconnect tool. For this, I'll be putting it right around the fuel rail. We can take this and start pressing it towards the fuel line. Once it feels as though it stops, take the fuel line and press it towards the tool. Should slide in quite a bit. That'll make it into the unlock position, and now we can draw this off. There we are. Now just below that area, you'll find that you have a hose that leads all the way up to the brake booster. We'll be removing this clamp, sliding the hose off of the intake. Just double check to make sure it's soft and pliable. You definitely don't want that to be ripped or torn. We'll make our way down to the PCV hose. For this, I'll just use my screwdriver, try to break it free a little bit here. You can also use a hose tool. There we are, just pivot that out of the way. Let's make our way all the way towards the back side of the engine. We're looking for our ignition wires. You'll find that those are connected to a distributor cap. Now on that distributor cap, you'll find that you have two bolts that you'll have to loosen up. They stay in that cap though. I'll use a seven millimeter with an extension and start loosening them. I'll just set that aside. At this point, we'll use a rag. I'm going to cover the hole that goes into the intake where that throttle body was. We don't want any debris making its way inside there. We'll use some compressed air. We want to try to clean off any of the dirt and debris that's along the engine where the intake connects onto it. We'll use some compressed air and just gently blow it away. Up along the front of the intake, we have this hose that goes over to the water pump. Squeeze this clamp, slide it down, and then we'll break the hose free from the intake. Now that I made my way around with the hose pick, I'll just take hold of this. I'm gonna give it a little wiggle. I just wanna make sure that it is broken free from the intake. That looks good. At this point, we can continue on to the mounting bolts that are holding the intake to the engine. To remove the intake from the engine, you'll find that you have six 13 millimeter headed bolts on each side of the intake, holding it down. Let's remove all 12 of those mounting bolts. Now this forward bolt right here just broke on me. That's extremely common. We'll continue on to the very next one. We'll be making sure that we're using hand tools while doing so. Let's do the same on the other side of the intake. The forward one on the passenger side has broken as well on our intake. I'll continue on to the next one heading towards the rear here. Just gonna use my pry bar to break this free real quick. Now we can start lifting up on the intake here. As we lift it up, we're going to be removing this forward hose from it. There we are. Okay. 
With the intake out of the way, let's also remove this hose because we are going to be replacing it. Just squeeze right on this clamp using some pliers. Hose pick to break it free. If you wanted to, you could also use a razor blade to try to cut it off here. It's really up to you. We're replacing it anyway. There it is. The next thing we'll do is start cleaning up the belly of the engine. Now, when I'm doing this, it's a good idea to go ahead and put something down along the bottom just to try to catch as much of the debris as possible while you continue. Along each side of the engine, you should still have your gasket left in place. Use a scraper to pull it out of there. Being extremely careful not to drop anything inside of any of these ports. You will want to use a vacuum to try to remove as much as possible. Now that we have those gaskets out of place, let's continue on by carefully putting a few rags inside of each of the ports going along each side of the engine. We want to ensure that nothing falls inside the engine as we continue. You can tell after I remove that, there's still a lot of the remaining gaskets still in place. I'll use my scraper to scrape that right off of there. Now that we have both of those off of there, we also want to pay attention along the front and also along the back. There should be a couple more gaskets. We'll just pry everything out of place. There we are. Now at this point, I'll continue scraping everything down, make sure that it's nice and smooth, and we can continue on with the cleaning process afterward. Once you have everything scraped down, all the way around the mating surface, we'll continue on with a sanding block and some fine sandpaper. I wanna make sure that everything's smooth to the touch. You don't wanna have any raised areas that could cause a leak. In which case, you're going to have a running condition and a check engine light. Just make my way all the way around this side. Do the same on the other side and the front and rear as well. Now that I have everything sanded, I'll be wiping it down with a clean rag with parts cleaner directly on the rag. I don't want to spray it onto the engine. We don't want anything getting inside there. After this is completely cleaned down, there's four areas on this that I want you to pay attention to. Two of them will be along the back side, one right here and one right along here. That's where your heads connect to the engine block. Along the front, you'll find the same exact thing. The reason why we want to pay attention to that is because we will be using a little bit of gasket maker in these areas. You want to ensure that they're clean and free of any debris or oil. With everything nice and clean, we can continue on to removing each of the rags from inside of these ports, being careful not to drop anything inside of the engine. If you have a vacuum cleaner, you can also try to use a vacuum cleaner inside the ports after you have removed the rags. On the bench, we're going to be paying attention to the intake. Typically, when I do these, I want to make sure that I clean all along the outboard side here so that as I'm putting it in place, nothing will fall into the engine. We'll just use a wire brush for that, maybe even a little bit of parts cleaner. Make our way all the way around. Once we have the outside cleaned up as well as possible, we'll continue on by flipping this up just like this. Now there's a few areas that we are going to want to pay attention on this. In your kit, you'll find that it came with the gasket for this belly pan here. So we're going to remove that, we'll clean up this area, and then of course replace the gasket and install the brand new mounting bolts. Once you have it clean, remove all 15 of your 11 millimeter bolts. Just give them a quick inspection. We'll set those aside. We have brand new mounting bolts. We can remove 
remove this, we're going to clean this up and remove all of the existing gasket. We'll get this cleaned up real quick, both sides. With the mating surface on the bottom plenum pan, nice and clean, we'll continue on to cleaning the bottom side of the intake here. We want to ensure that there isn't any of the existing gasket still in place. Once it's nice and clean, we'll start installing that brand new gasket and brand new mounting bolts. To clean this along the top, what I'm going to do is just put a small rag inside the bottom here so as I scrape, nothing will fall inside. Once it's scraped, I'll be using my sanding block. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Quick wipe with some parts cleaner here. Make sure that we don't get any debris on the inside here. Once it's nice and clean, we'll be continuing on with the gasket and that belly pan. You wanna make sure that you have the gasket in the proper orientation so all of the mounting bolt holes line up properly. We'll also put this pan in place, start in all of the mounting bolts before we tighten any of them. As I said, your kit comes with brand new mounting bolts, so we'll be using those. Now, once they're all started in, we're going to snug them and torque them in a very specific sequence, starting from the center and making our way out. Now that we have them all bottomed out, we're going to torque these in the same sequence, starting with 48 inch pounds. And then after we've completed one full cycle, we're going to be torquing these to 84 inch pounds in the same exact sequence. That was my first time around, now let's do that 84. Now we can move along to cleaning up the rest of the mating surfaces along each side of the intake and along the front and the back of it. Now, when it comes time to cleaning these things, it's important to make sure no debris falls inside of any of the ports. So with that said, we'll be using some clean rags. We'll just roll them up and slide them right inside there. Make sure you don't put them in too far because you do want to make sure you can remove them. We'll continue on with our scraper and get this as smooth as possible. Make sure this is nice and smooth using our flat sanding block. Use some parts cleaner directly on a rag. Completely wipe down and inspect all of those mating surfaces that you just cleaned down. This side here, the front and the rear. Once we're sure that this is nice and clean, we'll remove all of those rags and then do the exact same thing on the other side of the intake. It's important to make sure everything's nice and clean so you do not have a vacuum leak. This looks good. Let's get these rags out of here. We're gonna make our way back over to the engine. You remember those four corners that I had spoken to you about? 
we're going to be applying a little bit of gasket maker here. The gasket maker you use, you want to make sure that it is oil resistant. You don't need to use very much, just a small bead along each one of these four areas. Now we can install our intake gaskets. When we do this, you want to make sure that they're aligned perfectly. We'll just slide this right on here, set it on there. Double check to make sure each one of the ports are clear and they're not obstructed in any way. This side looks perfect, so we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. With both of those on there, we'll continue on with our forward and rearward gasket. Looking along the bottom of each of them, you'll find that you have two alignment tabs. We'll make sure that those are aligned, and then we can press them down into the proper position. We can start putting the intake in here as we do so. Pay attention to those gaskets. If it looks like they fall down at all, go ahead and take the intake back out and reinstall them into the proper positioning. Now we can start in all of our brand new mounting bolts. We are not going to tighten any of these. You need to make sure each one of them is started into the proper position. After that, we'll be snugging them and torquing them in a very specific sequence. Now that we have all of our mounting bolts started, we're going to quickly bottom them out. We want to very lightly bottom them out so we don't over tighten anything. Let's start with the third one from the rear on the passenger side. Now that I've done that one, I'll be making my way over towards the driver's side once again, third from the rear. Back over towards the passenger side, we'll be moving forward one bolt hole. Passenger side, once again, moving forward. Now we'll move to the second from the rear on the passenger side. Make our way over to the second of the rear on the driver's side. Now at this point, we'll continue on the driver's side and move to the second from the front. Passenger side, second from the front. Continue on the passenger side, we're going for that far rear. Far rear on the driver's side. All the way over in the front now, on the driver's side, and then to the passenger side. Now that we have them all bottomed out, we're going to continue on with torquing these in a very specific sequence. To torque these, we're going to start with the four center mounting bolts. We want to make sure that we torque these in the right sequence, but we're going to do it twice. We'll start by torquing them to 40 inch pounds. Third from the front over on the passenger side. Right here. 
Now at this point, we'll continue on to torquing these to 72 inch pounds. When we do this, we're going to make sure that we torque all of the bolts. We'll start with bolt number one here, third from the rear, third from the rear on the driver's side, third from the front passenger side, third from the front driver's side. This one's going to be second from the rear passenger side, second from the rear on the driver's side. Second from the front driver's side. Second from the front passenger side. Now we'll make our way all the way to the rear on the passenger side and then all the way to the rear on the driver's side. All the way in the front on the driver's side. All the way front on the passenger side. Once you've torqued all of those to 72 inch pounds, go back around and do the exact same thing one more time, just to confirm. After that, you'll continue on to torquing each and every one of them to 12 foot pounds in the same sequence. With that torque down, along the back side of the intake is where that distributor cap's going to go. We'll rest that down into the proper placement here. It should want to slide right down on there. Once you feel as though you have it in the proper place, we'll continue on with tightening each of the two mounting bolts. Once you bottom them out, you just want to make sure they're snug, but we don't want to over tighten them because we don't want to break them off. We'll continue on to each of our fuel injector wiring harnesses. Once you have it pressed in, make sure that you lock it in with that red locking tab. Press it in, double check to make sure it is secure, lock it down. We'll do the same to all eight. Now we can continue on to our hose down along the driver's side of the intake here. Slide that right on there. Press it in up against the intake as far as possible. Double check to make sure that's secure. And get this brake booster hose on here. Slide that right on over there. Make sure you put on that locking clamp. Give that a tug, make sure it is secure. We'll continue on to the fuel line here. Press it in, listen for a click. Give that a tug to make sure it is secure. And then of course, make sure you lock it in. When you're locking this in, we're going to come in at an angle, pressing this inboard side in first, and then we'll roll the outboard side down along the line. Double check that line, very important that that's tight. On the other side of the intake, we'll continue on to this vacuum line. Slides right on here. Let's connect this in right along here. Listen for a click from that. Now let's prepare to install our throttle body. Before you do so, it's important to make sure you have a look at the bottom. You want to remove the existing gasket. After that, go ahead and clean down this area, give it a quick inspection. We'll install the brand new gasket and install this on top of the intake. this on here. Now before we go ahead and put the mounting bolts in there, you need to remember that we still have this bracket that we want to make sure we put back in place along the passenger side. That will need to slide under this area. Start in all four of your mounting bolts before you tighten any of them. Once you have all of them started, you can bottom them out and then we'll torque each of them to 200 inch pounds. Now that all those are torqued, let's continue on by installing our three 8mm headed bolts that hold our throttle cable bracket in place. Once again, we're starting all of these in before we tighten any of them. That 
That one's bottomed out. Just make sure it's nice and snug. Do the same to all. Right there's bottomed out. Confirm that the bracket is secured properly and now we can continue on to each of those two cables. We'll start with the forward cable. It's going to come under this area and then attach right along here. Should slide right on there. We'll press it on there as far as possible. Make sure that it is secured. Now we can do this one. Bring this right up along here. Press that on there as well. Let's connect this in as well. Just press that right down on there. We'll get this hose on here. Slide it down on there as far as possible. Put the clamp back into its original position and tighten it up. Get this vacuum hose onto the throttle body. Now we can make our way along the driver's side of the throttle body. We have three electrical connectors here. We'll use the black one along the front. It goes into the map sensor. this one all the way in the back. Let's get this hose along the front here. Now when you're putting this on, you're going to find that you'll have to flex it a little bit. Make sure you have your clamps already on that hose. Start sliding it on one side, do the same on the other. Now that I have it started on both sides, I'll just go ahead and press it on. It's fairly easy. You want to make sure it's completely bottomed out on the top and the bottom at that water pump there. Once you have the clamps in the proper position, we'll make sure they're nice and tight. Now we can install our thermostat. That should fit flat down inside the intake here. Once you've done that, continue on to your brand new thermostat gasket. We'll get that aligned properly. Now we can put the housing on here. Down like that. Start in each of your two mounting bolts, snug them up, and then we'll torque those to 200 inch pounds. Let's continue on to our accessory bracket. That comes right along the front of the engine. Once you have it in place, continue on with all of your mounting bolts. You want to ensure that they go into the same exact area that you had removed them. Some of them are longer or shorter than others. Let's get these two in over here. The longer one goes in along the top, and the shorter one down along the bottom. Okay, I've got all of them started in. Let's go ahead and snug them up and make sure they're nice and tight. Once all the mounting bolts on the bracket are tight, we'll continue on to the coolant tube. For this coolant tube, you'll find that you have a rubber o-ring down at the end here. We'll go ahead and remove that o-ring, clean up the area, and then install our brand new o-ring that came with the kit. There's our brand new o-ring. Slide that right into place, should fit right into the groove. Now before you put this in place into the water pump, it's a good idea to use a little bit of gasket maker right along the very tip here. Just put a little bit right here and I'll work it around with a gloved finger. Now we can take this and put it in place down into that water pump. Make sure we got plenty of slack here. Slide that right in there. With that pressed in as far as it can go, we'll continue on with our one mounting bolt right along the front here. Now what you would want to do is continue on with the AC compressor. That would go right up along the top here. On our particular application, we did not have a compressor. We had the bypass pulley set up. So that's what I'll be installing. 
Put that right in place, align all three of those mounting bolt holes, and we'll start in all of the mounting bolts, snug them up, and torque them to 30 foot-pounds. Once that's on there, we'll continue on to reinstalling the idler pulley. Just make sure that's nice and tight. Let's reattach our oil dipstick tube. We'll start in that 13 millimeter headed bolt and snug that up. Let's get that alternator in place. We'll get the bottom hinge bolt in. That's the larger one. Start on the mounting nut along the back. We're going to leave this loose and start in the upper one as well. Once both of them are started, we'll snug them up. Now that they're snug, let's just make sure they're nice and tight. Let's get our bracket on here. Start in both of those mounting bolts. If you still had that plastic clip and yours wasn't broken like ours is, it would go right around this cable and in and through the bracket. Now we can install our serpentine belt. You remember as we were removing it, I had told you to make sure you put it back in the proper placement. Use our 14 millimeter, turn that tensioner all the way clockwise. Slide the belt into the proper position. Once you feel as though you have it in the right placement, you need to pay attention to each and every one of the pulleys. Some of the pulleys do have grooves on them. If your belt is off by even one groove, you're going to destroy your belt. So double check each and every one of them. Now we can install that air filter housing. We're going to put it over the throttle body. It should slide right into place. Along the front, you want to make sure that this aligns with its mounting stud at the same time. Once you have it down on the throttle body and over the stud, tighten that eight millimeter headed clamp along the backside there. Double check to make sure it's completely secure. On the other side of the air filter box, connect in your breather hose and your air inlet tube. There we are. Now the next thing we're going to do is fill the cooling system. There's a couple different ways that you'd want to do this. One would be with a funnel. You can go ahead and put the adapter right along the top here. Install the funnel on there. And then continue adding coolant. Once it starts burping, what you would want to do is start up the vehicle and continue watching the fluid level. We want to try to burp out all the air bubbles that are in the system. Once all the air stopped coming out, you can use your little plunger here. We'll plunge that off and then remove this and install the cap. For me personally, I'm going to be using a vacuum system. I'll hook it up on here. It's going to draw a vacuum in the cooling system, and then I'll draw the coolant directly in and avoid any air bubbles. Now, once you're sure that it's nice and full, we'll continue on with that radiator cap. Put it on there, turn it all the way to the right until it's nice and tight. Double check it. Once you've done that, Continue on to checking your coolant reservoir. That's just along the passenger side of the coolant fan shroud. Make sure it's up to par. If it needs to be added to, just go ahead and lift up on this yellow cap, add as much as needed, and then close it up good and tight. Now we can reconnect our negative battery terminal. These are 11 millimeter. Make sure this is nice and tight. 
Okay friends, we've got the truck back together. At this point, what you wanna do is start it up. You wanna let it run for a little while. We're going to wanna make sure that you double check that coolant level, make sure you don't have a misfire and no check engine light. Aside from that, take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.